welcome to ETCM EM Rapid 2022. I'm Dr. Bilum Bright and today we'll be discussing about syncope. So syncope or fainting is a symptom complex consisting of a brief loss of consciousness and it is associated with an inability to maintain the postural tone and it spontaneously resolves on its own without any medical intervention. And after that the patient comes to his previous baseline neurological condition. So you can affect any age group, old and young, but the comorbidity is mostly for the elderly people. And near syncope or pre-syncope is also a premonition of fainting uh, without any actual loss of consciousness. But it also shares the same basic pathophysiology of syncope and so also carries the same risk. So we usually consider both as the mesh together. So even though there are different uh, causes for syncope, the final common pathway is the same. Uh, there is about 10 seconds of complete disruption of uh, blood flow and uterine delivery to both cerebral cortices or to the brainstem reticular activating system or there is a reduction of cerebral perfusion by 35 to 50 percent mm -hmm. and in a normal person the consciousness awareness is depending upon the integrated function of this ascending reticular activating system and which is present in the upper brainstem and cerebral hemispheres so most commonly an inciting event can cause a drop in cardiac output and which decreases the oxygen and substrate delivery to the brain. So this syncope uh, is actually uh, it recovers after once the patient uh, assumes a supine position or uh, there is a response by the autonomic motility centers or there is a restoration of a perfusing cardiac rhythm. So the common causes of syncope uh, were identified in the Framingham Heart Study as the most common one as vasovagal, then followed by cardiac, orthostatic, medication related and neurological and some like psychiatric. But the uh, thing is actually a huge percentage of still remains unknown. So even after extensive evaluation, the cause remains unknown in about 18 to 40 percent of the cases. And in uh, just the primary ED evaluation, even up to 50 to 60 percent of cases may remain unknown. So now coming to the causes of syncope, the most important one is vasovagal and neurally or reflex medical syncope. So vasovagal syncope is a result of an autonomic dysfunction and there is reflex mediated or neurally mediated. So it is associated with an inappropriate vasodilatation, bradycardia or both and as a result of which there is inappropriate vagal or sympathetic tone. So a prodrome of light attendance with or without nausea pallor and or sweating and an associated feeling of warmth may accompany vasovagal syndrome. So the onset may be slow and progressive and which is more suggestive of a vasovagal syndrome. So vasovagal syndrome may occur as an expo after an exposure to an unexpected or unpleasant sight, sound or smell, fear or severe pain, emotional distress or instrumentation. And it may also occur in association with prolonged standing or kneeling in a crowded or warm place. And situational syncope, which can occur immediately or during uh, coughing, maturation, defecation, swallowing, is also something related to a reflex mediated syncope. And next is carotid sinus syndrome. Uh, it is a reflex mediated syncope associated with carotid sinus hypersensitivity and is characterized by bradycardia and hypertension. So basically, the carotid body is located in the carotid bifurcation containing pressure sensitive receptors. And this receptor is actually when they are abnormally stimulated can cause uh, two autonomic responses that is bradycardia and hypotension. And character sinus hypersensitivity is more common in men, the elderly people and those who are having history of ischemic heart disease, hypertension or head and neck malignancies. About 25% of people with character sinus hypersensitivity have uh, true character sinus syndrome with spontaneous symptoms. And we have to consider this as a cause in elderly patients with recurrent syncope and who are have showing negative cardiac evaluation. So most commonly there is a bradycardia followed by a pause of more than 3 seconds in case of character sinus syndrome. Uh, next is cardiac related syncope. So the causes of cardiac related syncope can be divided into two categories. That is one is structural heart disease and second is dysrhythmias. But uh, at the end result, in both settings, the heart is unable to provide adequate cardiac output and uh, to maintain the enough cerebral perfusion. So syncope can occur in uh, structural heart disease uh, if there, it limits the heart's ability to increase the cardiac output to meet the demand. And 
examples of structural heart disease are like aortic stenosis hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, pulmonary embolism and myocardial infarction uh, consider aortic stenosis as a structural cause of syncope in the elderly patients and the classic symptom will be a uh, constellation of chest pain dyspnea and exertion and syncope and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy usually as i seen as a cause of sudden death in youngsters can also be uh, first recognized in older age group like more than 60 years of age it is characterized by a stiff non compliant left ventricle uh, having diastolic dysfunction and outflow tract obstruction then massive acute pulmonary embolism may also go syncope due to obstruction of the pulmonary vascular bed and reduction in cardiac output then again acute myocardial infarction can also go syncope if the myocardial dyskinesia can cause reduced cardiac output so although both bradi and tachy dysrhythmia may lead to transient cerebral hypoperfusion there is no absolute uh, cut off like a high or low heart rate that can predict uh, syncope so symptoms may depend upon the patient's autonomic nervous system's ability to compensate for the decrease in cardiac output and also the heart structural ability to compensate and also the under degree of underlying uh, previous cerebral vascular disease for the patient so dysrhythmia usually occur in patients who are uh, congenital heart disease or acute structural conditions like myocardial infarction then cardiomyopathy and especially during uh, congestive heart failure and also in which the conduction system is damaged or compromised so these people are at high risk for arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death so arrhythmias may occur in the case of structurally normal heart patients with uh, primary electrolyte imbalance and also as seen in hypomagnesemia uh, which can lead to process dysfunctions and also in case of hemolytic disorders like brucada syndrome long or short qt syndromes and catecholamine associated polymorphic ventricular tachycardia the one important thing to be noted is uh, syncope from dysrhythmias are typically sudden totally proton syndrome so next is orthostatic syncope so orthostatic syncope is suggested uh, when postural hypotension there is a drop in systolic blood pressure more than 20 mm of mercury or there is a drop in uh, diastolic blood pressure more than 10 mm of mercury is associated with uh, syncope or pre syncope so basically when a patient assumes an upright posture the gravity shifts the blood from uh, to the uh, shift the blood to the lower part of the body and it can cause a drop in cardiac output so in a healthy individual uh, this uh, change or this shift in blood is uh, managed by the healthy autonomous nervous system which increases the sympathetic output and also decreases the parasympathetic outflow so this in turn increasing the heart rate and peripheral vascular resistance and thereby increasing the cardiac output and blood pressure but suppose if the autonomic uh, nervous system or the autonomic response is insufficient uh, to counter the drop in cardiac output especially upon the sudden change in posture this can cause a drop in a cerebral perfusion followed by syncope so the symptom onset is usually within the first 3 minutes after assuming the upright posture but sometimes it can be delayed in some patients So, however, the positive orthostatic changes have been documented in up to 40% of asymptomatic patients more than 70 years of age, and also in about a quarter of those uh, in less than 60 years of age. So, orthostatic alone does not always result in syncope. So, the causes of orthostatic uh, syncope include intravascular volume loss and also poor vascular tone caused by alpha receptor disorders or medications. so many serious causes of syncope may be associated with orthostatic changes so we have to always consider other life threatening causes of syncope before attributing them to orthostatic or orthostasis or autonomic dysfunction especially in the elderly patients so next we have medication induced syncope our medications may contribute to syncope by various means like and so a very careful history and consideration are required the most prominent ones are beta blockers and calcium blockers which may lead to a blunted heart rate response after orthostatic st- stress and also nitrates which can cause uh, venous pooling and vascular dilatation and diuretics may also uh, produce volume depletion uh, sec- which can go secondary reduce in cardiac output so some medications have pro arrhythmic properties especially as combination agents and this again can increase the concern of dysrhythmia as a cause of syncope
So next we have neurological disorders associated with the loss of consciousness. And neurological causes of uh, syncope uh, as primary are rare. So meet the definition of syncope, the symptoms must be transient and there should not be any persistent neurological deficits. So patient with loss of consciousness with persistent neurological deficits or altered mental status does not have a true syncope. And such patients may have alternated medical disorders like and most of them are life threatening like stroke, sepsis, drug overdose, etc. Uh, transient brain ischemia, a vertebral baser, atherosclerotic disease, basal artery migraine uh, may also result in a decrease in uh, cerebral blood flow, the reticular activating system leading to a sudden brief loss of consciousness. And the loss of consciousness due to this mechanism is not only rare but also uh, typically preceded by other symptoms like diplopia, vertigo, focal neurological deficits and nausea. So next uh, we have subclavian steel syndrome which is a rare cause of brainstem ischemia. So it is characterized by an abnormal narrowing of the subclavian artery proximal to the origin of vertebral artery so that whenever the pa patient exercises of the exercise the ipsilateral arm uh, blood is shunted or stolen from the vertebral basic system to the subclavian artery which supplies the arm muscles. Uh, and so which can again cause brainstem ischemia because of uh, decreased uh, cerebral perfusion. So anatomically narrowing is more common on the left side and physical examination may identify decreased pulse volume and diminished blood pressure in the affected arm. Uh, spontaneous subarachnoid hemorrhage may also uh, appear as a cause of syncope but it is usually accompanied by other symptoms like sudden onset of very severe headache, focal neurological deficits and or persistent altered mental status and removing it from the a true definition of syncope. So in this case the mechanism of syncope is thought to be an increase in intracranial pressure with a decrease in cerebral perfusion pressure. As we have the formula uh, cerebral perfusion pressure is equal to mean arterial pressure minus intracranial pressure. Whenever the intracranial pressure increases there is a chance that the cerebral perfusion pressure may drop. So that being said the syncope from any cause can result in head injury with traumatic uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Seizures may also be confused with syncope because brief tonic-clonic movements are also seen in syncope. Uh, distinguishing features of seizure over syncope is like a previous history of syncope, then confusion of a post sickle phase after the event lasting more than several minutes, then history of tongue bite, uh, incontinence and an epileptic aura. Next is psychiatric disorders. Uh, psychiatric disorders are associated with about 40% of patients who are coming with esophageal syncope and 37 to 62% of those with unexplained syncope. The most frequent uh, psychiatric disorders associated with syncope are a generalized anxiety disorder and major depressive disorder. A psychiatric cause of syncope is uh, one of exclusion and it should be assigned only after the other organic causes have been considered and excluded. So psychogenic uh, pseudosyncope is a term reserved for patients with apparent loss of consciousness without any impaired cerebral perfusion. So the principles of evaluation, the goal of ED evaluation is to identify those who are at risk of immediate or future morbidity or sudden death. And so patients presenting to ER with syncope or near syncope should be managed as the same. So patients with a specific diagnosis, the diagnosis can direct the disposition plan. And patients without a specific diagnosis, the risk stratification can guide disposition and care. So the risk stratification is based on careful history, thorough physical examination, ECG interpretation and additional testing as required. So the first thing is the history. So obtain a clinical history from the patient and also the any witnesses of the event. So begin with the description of the events that uh, preceded the loss of consciousness including the patient position, external stimuli, any history of any strenuous activity or any arm exercise. This all can give a clue to the cause of syncope. Then we should also ask about any premonitor symptoms like any aura, headache, diplopia, vertigo or any focal deficit. Also ask about any history of chest pain or palpitation. And clarify the duration of loss of consciousness and also symptoms occurring after regaining consciousness like any uh, post-sectal phase. So symptoms associated with syncope that should raise an alarm should be chest pain. Uh, it could be due to acute myocardial infarction, aortic dissection, uh, pulmonary embolism, or aortic stenosis. Then palpitation can be secondary to dysarthmia, 
then shortness of breath secondary to uh, pulmonary embolism and congestive heart failure then headache this will be a sign of subarachnoid hemorrhage and then abdominal or back pain which will be again a sign of leaking abdominal aortic aneurysm or ruptured ectopic pregnancy so a sudden event without any warning and events associated with any exertion should raise suspicion of a cardiac dysarrhythmia or structural cardiopulmonary lesion and ask about any antecedent illness and history of any alcohol or drug abuse and the past medical history may should include questions regarding the underlying previous cardiac conditions like congenital heart disease valvular heart disease coronary artery disease congestive heart failure and pulmonary embolism and also venous thromboembolism risk and ventricular dysrhythmia so document any prior history of syncope because patients with more than 5 episodes per year are more likely to be having vasovagal which can be secondary to autonomic dysfunction or maybe psychiatric diagnosis than dysrhythmia as a cause and record all medications including the over the counter drugs which the patient has been taking like laxatives and also people who are aggressively dieting to lose weight may have to like imbalance and uh, they may also be taking drugs like amphetamine so family history is also important because it can give a clue regarding history of prolonged qt syndrome dysrhythmia sudden cardiac death in the family and also other cardiac risks so pay special attention to patients who are presenting to er with complaints of history of fall or a history of road traffic accident without any apparent cause uh, particularly if the patient is above 65 years of age and has a previous history of coronary heart disease or has a history of abnormal ecg because on our initial arrival we, we may be preoccupied by the trauma evaluation there is a high chance we may sort the possibility of a syncope element seizure is again another uh, common event which may be mistaken as syncope a uh, brief um, tonic clonic activity may accompany syncope of any etiology but the two conditions does not share uh, the same pathophysiology mechanism and a history of previous seizure disorder or a premonitory and post event symptoms may assess differentiation so a classic aura or a post atrial confusion and muscle pain may indicate seizure whereas a characteristic prodromal symptoms of nausea and diaphoresis suggest reflex mediated vasovagal syncope and witness information may also be useful and witness uh, may give history of head turning or an unusual posturing during the event which may be in consistent favor of seizure and a prolonged postural phase is more common with seizure and neural incontinence is not a useful uh, factor of distinction so now coming to the physical examination uh, signs of trauma without any defensive injuries to the hands or knees may indicate a sudden event without warning like a syncope secondary to dysrhythmia and we have to focus our physical examination on the cardiovascular and neurological event systems initially we have to uh, take a blood pressure of both arms and compare and if it is unequal it can indicate uh, aortic dissection of subclavian steel and next uh, take orthostatic blood pressure after 5 minutes in the supine position then again repeat one measurement after 1 minute of standing and then one more at 3 minutes of standing a symptomatic increase decrease in more than 20 mm of mercury in systolic blood pressure is considered abnormal or as is a decrease in less than 90 mm of mercury independent of development of symptoms so this both can indicate to orthostatic syncope then cardiac evaluation may reveal a murmur of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or aortic stenosis a neurological examination may uncover findings of any focal neurological deficits or evidence of autonomic instability like peripheral neuropathy i am perform rectal examination to check for any stimulus guac to evaluate for any gi bleeding so diagnosis of syncope is mainly clinical with and careful evaluation of presentation and so selected tests and history is the most important element and most diagnostic tests have low diagnostic yield and therefore should be guided only by the history and physical examination so next is ecg and ed monitoring so obtain a totally ecg and place the patient on a continuous cardiac monitor so even though the ecg may lead to diagnosis only in a very few number of patients it is a simple and non invasive test which can be used for risk stratification so assess the ecg for any evidence of prior cardiac pulmonary disease or any uh, signs of acute ischemia or any new ecg changes compared to the previous one and also any signs of dysrhythmia heart block prolonged or short qt interval 
A prolonged QTC interval has a variable definition, but usually it is more than 470 milliseconds or with more than 500 milliseconds being associated with significant outcomes. And whether a short QTC interval less than 350 milliseconds is again concerning as well. So new or old left bundle branch conduction block or abnormality like posterior or anterior fascicular block, QRS wiring, etc. are 3.5 times more likely to be associated with morbidity than ECGs without these findings. And non-sinus rhythms are about 2.5 times more associated with morbidity than sinus rhythms. And numerous uh, studies have pointed that the value of ED monitoring is additive to a single ECG done in a year. So it is always advisable to uh, do, go for a continuous cardiac monitoring than a single ECG done in a year. So laboratory testing is directed by the result of history and physical examination and no other test than an ECG should be considered to be routine in ED for syncope evaluation. So depending upon the patient, suppose if the patient is presenting with orthostatic hypotension with a uh, stool of blood positive, we have to go for a complete blood count. And if it is a young female with again syncope history, then we have to go for pregnancy test. A transitory wide gap, anal gap when acidosis is usually seen in a generalized seizure but not present in simple syncope. And serum electrolytes usually uh, don't give us much clue about the cause of syncope but an elevated blood urea nitrogen can be used as a predictor in, in uh, like predicting serious adverse outcome in the coming 30 days after syncope. So the next is decision making and risk assessment. So if you are able to come to a diagnosis for the cause of syncope by the initial history, physical examination and ECG, the disposition is simple. The patients with the cardiac or neurological syncope should be given appropriate speciality consultation and may be admitted if necessary. Uh, suppose the patient is having a clear history of vasovagal, orthostatic or medication related syncope which have no increased risk of cardiovascular morbidity or mortality does not require admission as long as the, the deficits or medication related misadvantages are corrected. So despite best efforts, a diagnosis will not be established in about 40% of patients coming with syncope. And in this kind of patients, several studies have been done to assess the risk stratification variables. So we can identify people who are at short term risk and also are at a risk of about one year morbidity and mortality. So most of the studies have used variables like ECG, previous history of cardiac disease and a certain age criteria and history of any prodromal symptoms or sometimes point into more of a vasovagal episode or maybe additional factors. And considering all these elements, they have given a risk stratification score. And these tools can be used for further evaluation of the patient and also in plan for disposition for the treatment. There are some significant predictors which can predict adverse effects, primary dysarrhythmia, which includes a history of congestive heart failure, and abnormal ECG, which can include anything other than a sinus rhythm. Then again, any new conduction delays or new changes as minimal as first degree AV block any morphological changes to the QRS complex or ST segment or anything something that is new compared to the old or prior AC changes. Then a hematophilic less than 30%. Then patient presenting with complaints of shortness of breath and a systolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeters of mercury in the ED. So presence of any one of the fire risk, high risk criteria listed above has a 89% sensitivity and 52% specificity of death for death at one year, one year. So there has been inconsistent findings when validating the San Francisco syncope rule, which have been primarily related to definitions of syncope and application of variables. So other studies uh, above for people who are above 65 years of age with syncope, without protrom or lack of vasovagal etiology, positive troprom. So next coming to the treatment part, uh, treatment should be guided by the diagnosis and patients with or at risk of life threatening dysarrhythmias can be treated with pacemakers or automatic implantable defibrillators as indicated. Uh, for patients with suspected medication causes, the offending agent should be removed. Uh, rehydrate those with orthostasis and dehydration. 
and educate patients with vasovagal syndrome to avoid triggers and also when the episodes are likely to occur the patient should either lie down or sit down when they are sensing a prodrome and beta blockers should not be given to decrease the episodes of vasovagal syndrome so in patients which who we are not able to identify a cause of syncope uh, guidelines recommend using non risk factors to separate patients into risk groups for disposition and management therefore european society of cardiology guidelines identify high risk and low risk patients while the american heart association guidelines also identify intermediate risk patients there is agreement that a low risk patients which who have a clear history of reflex mediated syncope without a history of heart disease and who are currently asymptomatic and have normal physical examination findings and ecg can be discharged with non urgent primary care follow up but coming to the intermediate and high risk group there is less agreement on which patients belong to which group because there has been some guideline discrepancy and uh, differences in the ratio and variations however patients who are thought to be high risk by the examining physician and those with active chest pain or dyspnea exertional syncope sudden onset palpitation prior to syncope ecg evidence of conduction abnormalities or ongoing arrhythmia history of congestive heart failure or structural heart disease or in the family history of sudden death uh, with uh, recommended for admission in the hospital and decision on testing uh, should be determined by the patient's physical clinical presentation and also comorbidities and physical examination with the exception of patients with acute life threatening diagnosis like stroke and aortic dissection the core of inpatient evaluation is focused on identification of underlying heart disease and detection of dysarrhythmias uh, most patients even those at higher risk can be monitored for a period of time in ed or observation area and well if they are discharged with a prolonged monitoring device uh, monitoring is a key investigation of arrhythmia detection and whether it is inpatient or outpatient so a echocardiogram can reveal abnormalities which are uncommon in patients with a negative cardiac history and also in setting of a normal cardiac examination and ecg most low risk patients need no workup unless symptoms are recurrent long term cardiac monitoring includes many different ambulatory or event monitors which are useful to identify dysarrhythmias especially in cases of intermediate to high risk patients who are discharged after a period of hospital monitoring However, prolonged monitoring for patients with syncope has now become a recommendation by the newest American Heart Association guidelines. And long-term use of implantable loop recorders has given a diagnostic yield of more than 50% in patients with recurrent syncope. But the duration one should wear this ambulatory monitor has not been established with certainty so far. Next is outpatient evaluation. Uh, Tilt table testing is designed to identify reflex mediated syncope. by rapidly moving the patient from a supine pain position on a tilt table to a upright position of about 60 degrees for 45 minutes a positive endpoint is reached if the syncope or hypotension or the patient's typical symptoms are reproduced a recurrent syn- reflex mediated syncope resistant to conservative therapies can be treated with a cardiac pacemaker a psychiatric referral is also recommended in young patients without any underlying heart disease who have recurrent syncopal episodes Uh, generalized anxiety and depressive disorders are the most commonly assessed assigned diagnosis and patients who have a prolonged qt segment uh, should be referred for genetic testing for lqts gene and those who are gene negative have very little score fatal syncope so that's all for now thank you